We are a voice of prayer bringing heaven to our earth. Demonstration of the spirit and power, um, serving the King of glory and the body of Christ. Uh, let's pray over the teaching. Father, we thank you that the Lord shall come to earth and all the holy ones, yes, saints and angels with him. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Father, we thank you. Uh, there he, in that in Jesus, will be one Lord, his name one, the government upon his shoulder. We give thanks to you and we join with great voices saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever yours O Lord is the greatness and power and the glory and victory and majesty uh, Lord it is yours because you are to be exalted we thank you for your plan we thank you for salvation uh, Father we thank you that your word Father when we believe your word and speak your word water becomes wine I thank you for the teaching tonight that becomes wine I thank you Father for hearing ears and see uh, hearing ears and seeing eyes and father that they understand that they have to receive the spiritual of Jesus and act uh, in their spiritual man to see your kingdom come that they see your kingdom come you are alpha and omega the beginning and the end water into wine and the people who see you who know that will recognize the spiritual in Jesus and act on that it's not going to be by the natural. Father, we thank you for your glory and we give you praise. Uh, we thank you, Father. May the rivers flow high and wide and see your kingdom revealed in this day. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, the teaching tonight is, um, if you heard a message, what message would you want to hear? Um, this is titled, uh, the, the Christ is Risen Message. Christ is is risen so this is the message did you know that when this message was delivered that it was delivered by women Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10 it says this now after the Sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn well Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there's a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and he sat on it that mean that angel wasn't done he was going to say something he wasn't going to leave he wasn't afraid of soldiers no because soon we're going to see them on the ground Verse 3, well, his countenance was like lightning. His clothing is white as snow. And, and it says the guards shook for fear of him, and they became like dead men. When you do not know the things of God, then you'll faint at the things of God. Verse 5, but the angel. Yeah, when I was reading this, but the angel answered, well, who in the world was talking? Nobody that I could read here was talking. There's earthquakes, and the stone is being rolled away by this big angel. And it says, but the angel answered, and he's talking to women. He's not talking to men because they're on the ground. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has risen as he said. Now come and see the place. He's getting there and he's pointing from where he just opened. Come and see this place. Come and see where the Lord had lay. And go quickly and tell his, his disciples he's risen from the dead. And indeed he's going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I've told you. Uh, so they went in quickly uh, out of the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran to bring the disciples' words. Uh, yes, this angel is giving them a comfort uh, and exhorting them, and that, yes, Jesus is risen from the dead. The angel said uh, he was not afraid of soldiers. Uh, he spoke, uh, not answering questions, but their actions. I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. They were seeking the spiritual, not the natural, because in the natural it looked like he was dead. 
And so it's, it's uh, I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. And so this is being acquainted with God, the things of God. Heaven appears on earth and then men will faint like dead men because they're not, they're not looking at the supernatural. They're living by the natural and of course they're scared. I had to look up this word when he said go and tell them to go to Galilee because I had to see that appointment they had. And I looked up this word because it began to stand up like this structure, this huge structure within this passage. And so they, he was telling them to go to Galilee here uh, in this last verse here of 10 that we read. And this, uh, he said that you'll see me. And that Galilee is the New Testament word 1056. And what it has the meaning is it was telling them to go to the heathen circle. The believers, if you're believing, you're going to go where Jesus sends you. And he was sending them to Galilee for something to meet Jesus. And there's a heathen circle because Galilee was known as a heathen circle in this passage. So Mary Magdalene, central messenger, she's commissioned uh, to, to go in and to inform. We find this Luke 24 and 10 and John 20, 10 through 18. Um, I wanted to point to this because I've just been reading this awesome book. This woman is, uh, I mean, she studies and she knows the depth and the height and width and love of Christ and, and the, the words that she uh, has uncovered in the scriptures. But but her name is author uh, Donna Hell. Yes, she's an author, Donna Hell. The uh, Handmaiden's Conspiracy is her book. And she had in there, uh, as I've been looking and going in and finding her other teachings, but Donna Hell uh, had uh, in this passage uh, within her book that, that there in the 12th century there were early writings of this, this person, Hilip, uh, Hippolytus of Rome, A.D. 170 to 235 uh, and so she listed what the other writings and support was that Mary Magdalene was an apostle commissioned others list her as the leading woman uh, recognized and spoken of as in the religious uh, as well as other denominations some as recent as Protestants but Mary Magdalene was regarded religion as an apostle a leader earnest for Christ but by no means a harlot or any other such hated speech. Again, uh, go find the information. Go look it up for yourself as to <laughs> uh, this Donna Howe and uh, the Handmaiden's Conspiracy. Uh, it's, a, it's an awesome book and to find uh, Jesus didn't hijack women. Uh, it was the church who hijacked women. Women came seeking him at the tomb. It was empty and they're hearing he's not here. He's not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the Lord lay. And I can just see this angel say you know come over here and take a look. You know if there had been a crowd there would have been a whole bunch but no there was just some women. Uh huh. The tomb is empty. It had been heaving with the life as Jesus walked out. And, uh, and, and Jesus, all that he had given in his teachings to disciples uh, and to the people he uh, believed, he proclaimed it to be true. And he walked out. Uh, Jesus has said that he would rise on the third day, Matthew 20, 18 through 19. Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief uh, priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Uh, verse 19, and it says, uh, And deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and to crucify, and the third day he would rise again. And again, these uh, Gentiles are talking about was Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus was explicit uh, on his sufferings, and this would, it was his third announcement of torment and crucifixion. We also find it in Matthew 16, 21. And from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Yes, and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And then Matthew 17 and 22, reading through verse, yes, 23, uh, he said this, Now while they were standing in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the, the third day he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Women believed what Jesus spoke. They were expecting 
you know, when they're, you're given something and you're told, and this has to be true, and you can see where the rest of them were at. From verse 4, Matthew 28, uh, the guards became dead men. They fell in fright, fainted in the presence of God, but the righteous, the glad. Uh, these women rejoicing, exceedingly glad of the events that they saw that had manifested before their eyes. They, uh, uh, these who fainted uh, knew not God. They fainted in the day of adversity, Proverbs 24 and 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small, uh, trouble, distress. I hope you faint not, it's what's coming. Uh, they fainted to see the glowing angel from heaven and move a boulder out of the way. Not something someone would see every day, but God, when he shows up, you know, look out. It's going to be good. They're not trained in the word, and they were not expecting anything as tremendous as they saw. As I was working on this, um, and this was, I've been, you know, working on it since uh, last Wednesday, but uh, as I was working on this, I thought of God and having a sense of humor. Uh, God uh, had them uh, had Roe v. Wade overturned in the Pride Month of July, and they say God doesn't have a sense of humor. The angel from heaven addressing the supernatural on earth and those who were supernatural in their thinking were receiving what was being done. Let's take a look at some more women. Let's get, dive into this and see women who recognize the Messiahship. Well, the Christ is risen message. Well, they held him by uh, the feet and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying rejoice and they came and held him by the feet and worship him. You, we see this again, who embraced his feet, uh, Luke 7, uh, verses 36 through 50. And then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And then, behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, uh, when she knew Jesus... She was not invited to this dinner party when she knew Jesus was in this Pharisee Simon's house. She showed up. Yes, yeah, she brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Um, and then it says, And stood at his feet behind him weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head. She kissed his feet, anointed them with fragrant oil. Now here, verse 39, When the Pharisee um, who invited Jesus saw this, well, he spoke to himself. So I, I'm sure it was quietly saying, because he probably didn't want Jesus to know, but Jesus knew people's thoughts. And it says here, he said the, this Pharisee, well this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is, who's touching him, for she's a sinner. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Jesus is going over this, this guy's, you know, thought process, and, uh, thought process, and Jesus answered in verse 40, uh, Simon, I have something to say to you. And then Simon says, well, teacher, say it in verse 41. Well, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them. Uh, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? And Simon answered and said, well, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And, and he said to them, well, you have rightly judged. And so he turned to the woman, but he said to Simon, he turned to Mary or this, you know, this woman. And he's turned to her, and then and he and he's saying uh, this. He said, "Do you see this woman? I entered your house, and you gave me no water for my feet." But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss, kiss my feet since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, yeah. Same loves little. Verse 48, and he began to say to themselves, well, who is this who even forgives sins? And then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So this is the spiritual over the natural. Uh, this woman was receiving Jesus in his Messiahship. 
Uh, that ointment that she put on, New Testament 3464, uh, Muron, is uh, that which uh, implied as to myrrh, uh, perfumed oil. But I like the extension of it because it even went to the numbering of New Testament 4735, and I really like this. When you're doing something expensive like that for another, like what she was doing for Jesus, the word is str uh, stratiuma. And it's an armament. It's like a body of troops, a soldiers going in. It's a soldier, a man of war. It's the one who's applying this. Is is is? I'm standing here for the spiritual. I'm standing here for the spiritual. Second Corinthians 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Her sins forgiven, though many are forgiven, she loved much. And this Pharisee, he loved little. This woman, she fought in the spiritual, tending to the care of Jesus, washing his feet with her hair. I mean, the you know, again... Are we alive into the, the spiritual of God? Are we fainting away or acting like this Simon the Pharisee? The Christ is risen message. Well, Jesus told Mary Magdalene to tell the apostles of his resurrection. And so on the third day, you know, they're, they've slept at the rock. These soldiers, the tomb is open. Uh, disciples of Jesus are hiding. But you have the followers, the ones who showed at the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, when they returned from the tomb, they gave this amazing announcement for the disciples. The stone is rolled away the tomb is empty and they told about the angel so Mary Magdalene has turn, returned she's weeping Jesus um, uh, is uh, meeting up with her uh, and, and called her by name and she returns to tell the disciples I have seen the Lord John 20 verse 18 most of the disciples did not believe the women but Peter and John ran to the tomb they're hearing Mary Magdalene they're seeing the strips of cloth all of this is folded up and they were the, these two returned to the other disciples and told them that the tomb is empty thereby verifying the reports of the women uh, so again Mary Magdalene Joanna Mary the mother of James you have these people uh, one's listed as two the others listed as three we know that there was more women than there was men because the only men that were there were on the floor like dead men <laughs> And so belief, it's acting. It's, it's, it's when you get the belief. And then Peter and John ran to see after they heard this word uh, from Mary Magdalene, the to empty tomb. It was women who saw it. Uh, first person to see Jesus risen, well, Mary Magdalene. God entrusted women to announce the most important news in history. Right. But then after this all occurs, then there's going to be a religion that's going to come and hijack, try to hijack women and the speaking. Uh, go tell Matthew 28 and 10. Then Jesus said to them, well, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Matthew 28 and 16, then 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed them. You know, in mountains they have, um, uh, let's say, giants. Because remember, we've talked about Caleb, uh, hallelujah, <laughs> and Caleb had a mountain, and he was 80 years old, and he was going to take that mountain. He had five giants. People, this, the spiritual, the spiritual, and Jesus. In verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and along with you always, even to the end of the age. Uh, Jesus would meet, meet them. They were going to be uh, meeting him in Galilee, and the things would continue to go forward. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Spiritual, living by the spiritual, expecting the things of the spiritual. Mercy revealed Jesus included men and women equally. He dealt equally in their deliverance, a healing and miracles. Matthew 8, 14 through 15. Now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand. Oh, my goodness, he's going to touch her hand. 
and then in the fever left her and then she rose and she served them uh, you can also see this in Matthew 9 18 to 26 Matthew 5 25 to 34 Matthew 15 21 to 28 uh, Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon um, then now uh, this in this passage where we're going to see this woman Tyre and Sidon uh, this was cities that was denounced by God they were so depraved wicked that it, they were denounced in Isaiah 23 and Ezekiel 28 they, these cities were so depraved and the, the Jesus went out from there and departed towards this region and behold a woman of Canaan again came from that region and cried out to him saying have mercy on me O Lord son of David yeah, she's recognizing messiahship. There are people today who recognize his messiahship and do nothing with it. Let's see what she did. Because she recognized it, but she did something. Let's take a look. Uh, he says uh, here, uh, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. And then uh, she continues, my daughter is severely demon possessed. But this is what he answered uh, to her. Um, uh, he he uh, answered her not a word. Silent. Silence. And then it says his disciples came and urged him. I'm amazed at these guys. They're they they think they're all that in a bag of chips too. He said, they're saying, well, send her away for she cries out after us. Oh, she was calling out for Jesus, son of David, have mercy. She was relying on his messiahship. She was looking at the spiritual of who he is. Hallelujah. And then she, you know, and it says, well, she's crying out after us. No. Nah. In verse 24, and he answers and said, well, I was not a sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. She didn't care if he called her a dog. She's worshiping. She knows he's Messiah, and she's worshiping. There are many people who save Jesus and his Messiahship, and they'll turn and just continue. They'll go buy their pot and go sit in a vehicle and smoke. They'd rather, you know, yeah, hot dog, that's Messiah, and then they're going to turn and go do something else. They're going to worship, yeah, drugs. She didn't. She said, she, she, she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Verse 26, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And this is what she said in verse 27. Yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Yeah, I love this one. The woman that's been over with the infirmity, Jesus, Jesus reaching this woman. Luke 13, 10 through 17. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there's a woman who has a spirit of infirmity 18 years. She's bent up. She can't raise herself up. Yeah. Verse 12, well, when Jesus saw her, he called her uh, to him and said to her, woman, you are loose from your infirmity. You know, she could have just stayed in that position. She could have just stayed, but he called her over there, and she went to him. She recognized Messiahship. She obeyed him. She obeyed them. There's people who called all the time, you know, girl, thou art loose. Well, yeah, did you move over to Jesus? Uh-huh, let's take a look, you know, look at this. Let's think about what our lives. Verse 13, and he laid hands on her, and immediately she's made straight. She glorified God. Verse 14, yeah, there's, there's always this indignant people. Verse 14, but the ruler of the synagogue, you know, Boss Hog, mm -hmm, indignant, is speaking here. Ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation with the, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. He said to the crowds, there are six days on which men are out to work, therefore, Will come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath. Amazing that this, this guy, ruler of the synagogue, would not think that God would heal every day of the week. Right. Amazing. 
Verse 15, the Lord then answered and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall, lead it away to the water? So not out this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, you know, think of it 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath, you know, leading to the water of life, leading, you know, to Jesus, would not, you know, and she went to him, to the water of life, and she was healed. He commended, oh, I love this one. Hot dog, we're going to have fun with this one because there's the people who just don't like to tie the tithe and give offerings. He commended the poor woman contributing two coins, Mark 12 and four, 41 to 44. And, uh, hallelujah. And he, um, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into this treasury. And, and many were rich who put in much. Uh, verse 42, then one poor woman came and threw in two miles, which makes a quadrant. And so he called his disciples to himself and said, he's calling them over in support to this woman. Did you see what this woman just did? Come over here. I want you to see what this woman just did. Right. Uh, surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in um, more. She has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. This temple treasury was the closest area that women could come into because, yeah, uh -huh, they're going to make sure that they're going to get their, their tithes and offerings from women as well. So you have to have this for women to come in. And Jesus saw this. Uh, Jesus saw this. Um, and so these last two coins meant she had nothing for her next meal, but her faith was in the Lord who would provide. Her actions spoke of faith in him. The spiritual and giving by faith, living spiritually uh, to this gift that was to worship God. Uh, Jesus said, come over here and take a look. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you have people saying, but me and my wife, we both have to have, you know, a job. And you know gas is $5? Maybe not where you live. Your trust has to be in God. Your trust has to be in God. Oh, but me and my wife, we both have to have a job. You better be confessing God's word because both of you may not have that here. If God, if it goes up to, oh, let's see, what they say they think it's going to, um, $20. Call to serve distractions and trouble or peace in the word of God. Luke 10, 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Uh, and then verse 40, uh, and his word in uh, verse 40, but Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, well, Lord, do you not care that my sisters left me to serve alone? <laughs> Remember, this is Martha's house. She's invited Jesus. She's the head of the house. Uh-huh, she, so she was to be in charge. It's funny how people just want to drag you into stuff that they're supposed to be doing. They'll just want to drag you in. Yeah. Therefore, tell her to help me in verse 41. And Jesus answered and said, Well, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. You know, when you're, you're, you're you know, called to serve, you've got the gift that God has placed in you. It's something specifically you can do. Are you trying to drag other people in it and you stand and just be the greeter? This was Martha. She's invited Jesus. She was to serve in the capacity of hospitality within her home, but she's trying to drag Mary in there to do the things that she, the one who invited Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, Jesus concerned with Mary's distractions or worry, being troubled about many things. Mary had chosen to sit at his feet, be fed the word of God. Um, Martha invited uh, but to entertain, but Mary knew Jesus' messiahship. Martha's a party girl, and she's going to invite them in, and let's have a meal. Let's sit down, and let's do some chatting it up on the couch. But Mary knew who Jesus is and was. Amen. Amen. The Christ is risen message. The first message, I love this. Yeah, but Shelly, we've already talked about the woman at Samaria. Well, hot dog, we're going to do it again because there's some little nuggets of meat here that you need. Right. 
John 4 verses 1 through 42, um, it's, it's this, uh, therefore when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than, uh, than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did, he left Judea, departed again to Galilee, but, but he needed to go, verse 4, needed to go through Samaria. Yeah, and we know who's in Samaria. We know who, what the appointment is. He's going to see this woman. So he came to the city called Sukkar near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son. Um, and so Je Jesus, therefore being weary of his journey, he sits by the well. And so then, then in verse 7, a woman is arriving on this, what is the sixth hour, which would be noon. A woman in Samaria came to draw water and said, Jesus saying, give me a drink. His disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And so this woman is saying, well, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift, if you knew the gift, if you knew salvation, if you knew Messiahship, if you know what's in me and who it is that says you give me a drink, you would ask and would have given you living water. So again, salvation, accepting the gift. Are we accepting the gift? She going to argue with them for a while. So let's look at this and see where she receives and moves on. Verse 11, and she says, well, sir, you have nothing to draw with you. We're still in the natural. Where then did you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, drank from it, as well as his son and, and his livestock? So Jesus says, well, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into e eternal life. It's never, never going to run dry. It's always going to be what you need. Right. And the woman said, well, sir, give me this water that I may not, you know, thirst, come here to draw. No, it's still in the natural. She's not looking at the spiritual. And so Jesus says, well, we're going to just deal with your natural. Because he's going to do it spiritually. <laughs> Go call your husband and come here. She says, well, I have no husband. And Jesus said, well, you have well said, I have no husband. For you've had five, and the one you have now is not your husband. And then verse 19, well, she says, I, I perceive that you're a prophet, and our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one out to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me that the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. And so Jesus is already pointing to the, the, you know, the Jewish heritage and who Jesus is. He's already pointing in that direction the, for the salvation. And, then, and that's repentance. We have to repent. We have to repent from all ways that move from the natural to live in the supernatural. And there are some people that's just not willing to live that way. And so she's, <laughs> and Jesus says, um, he says, for the Father seeking such to worship him, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said, well, I know Messiah is coming, who's called Christ, and when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, well, I, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, the disciples are coming back, and they're marveled that he's talking with a woman, yet no one, yeah, I wouldn't interrupt Jesus either. They were going to ask him, well, why are you talking to that woman? Uh-huh. And so they marveled, he talked with the woman, yet no one said, well, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? Verse 28, the woman then left her water pot because Jesus said, I am he. She was expecting Messiah. She spoke. He was coming. And then when he said, I'm he, and he just told her her life, she's got it. She's on her way to glory with Jesus. Hallelujah. She's left. She's going to the city. Um, uh, and then the, the, in verse uh, uh, 31, in the meantime, well, his disciples urge him, saying, well, Rabbi, eat. And Jesus is saying this in verse 32, I have food to eat which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, well, has anyone brought him food? And Jesus said, my food is to, to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. 
finish his work. And uh, verse, verse 35, do you not say there's still four months and then the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they're already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent to you the, that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you've entered into um, their labor. And when Jesus was talking about this was his food, he lived this, he ate this, he drank this. When you have a mother who loves her children, who loves her children, her food is to feed her children. Her food is to speak care into their lives by doing things for them, caring about them and doing things. That's her food. But you can find a woman today who is a woman, but she has no food for, for giving life to children or anything else that has to do with kids and it's amazing how she's even walking around verse 39 John 4 and 39 and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified he told me all that I ever did so when the Samaritans had come to him they urged him to stay with them and he stayed two more days and many believed his word verse 42 then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said or uh, for our, we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. See, that's, that's the importance is she still went and told him. She recognized him and <laughs> yes, they needed to recognize, right? They needed to recognize. They needed to recognize. And so she went and told him about him and they went out there to see Jesus. Come see. Remember the tomb? It's empty. Yeah, he's over here. He's over here. He's given a word. And so this is people still giving the word. Jesus is resurrected. He's seated at the right hand of God. And we're still giving. Are you receiving? Because we're smiling. <laughs> we have joy. We have joy. We're excited. There's a joy in our hearts. Jesus had a need, a harvest of souls in Samaria, a woman, a sinner, would meet the Messiah, be changed and charged for the Lord. Some received her testimony, testimony but many more received you know, his. That is to recognize his Messiahship and then act on it, do something. Do we work together spiritually with the Lord? Christ went to the forbidden territory. He had divine appointment. Uh, he met this woman. Five husbands, uh, and now living with one that one hus her husband, she was inspired to go and preach the good news of the Messiah to the men of Sukkar because Christ was revealed to her. Jesus did not tell her to go and be an evangelist, but she led the way. She gave the Samaritans the message they received, or uh, that she had received at the well and brought them to the well. She brought them to the well of living water. She brought them to Jesus. I'm bringing you to Jesus. What will you do with it? What will you do with Jesus today? Christ did not silence this woman at the well. He gave her free reign to bring the people to him. He sanctioned the meeting. He personally sanctioned her commissioning. She is Samaritan, despised by traditional Jews, a woman oppressed by men and discarded and shunned by other women. She became a preacher listed today. Jesus listed today in teachings in the Eastern Orthodox tradition have her name listed because evidently it brought down was brought down she went on to be with the apostles to preach and teach she was baptized and received the Holy Spirit it was recorded of her her name was listed with Peter James and John they called her her name, Fotini, who faced Nero like Paul. She, Fotini, saw her days of her life end at a well. It began at a well meeting Jesus, and she lost her life at a well. 
in AD 66, her earthly life came to an end. She met her Lord at the well, and there her life was ended many decades later. This information I give you again is from page 223 of The Handmaiden's Conspiracy. This is written by Donna Hale. Lord, I pray for Donna Hale that she continues to bring forth your word for your glory and to your praise. Father, Protect her family, protect her husband, protect her, her family. In closing, Christ did not hijack women. He sought them for the kingdom of God, did not view them as second-class citizens, nor did he refuse them the work of the kingdom. He inspired those uh, he walked with through life. He reached many. He came to release many women into ministry, and you can read about them in the pages of the New Testament. Yeah, like, you know, Lydia and Phoebe and some of those. Yeah. Um, he trusts women with his story. He trusts that we will know our identity in him, that we are made in our mother, mother's womb, but it was God who created us, knitted us in our mother's womb. We have unique qualities and gifts, and we have the same Holy Spirit that Peter, James, and John had. Will we open the gift of God in our lives and use what God has placed there for us to do? The Bible inspires us. And to reach for Jesus, it inspires us to go in his name. We reach hearts, not with clubs and bats, nor with gossip, with, but with truth that sets captives free. Women are called as much as men are called this day. Women are equipped and in, through, in Jesus and by Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, we arise and take the word in boldness, speaking either at the well or the closest coffee shop that people require life in Jesus Christ. Wait, may you and I meet that commission with great respect and honor that God thought of us for that assignment. Amen and amen.